Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel Curiosity Box and this is the third video in the hashtag Take the Mask Off Autism Educational Event. Thingy. So this week's theme is mental health. So as well as watching this video, be sure to use the hashtag take the mask off and learn what everybody else has to say about masking and mental health. And I don't really have anything to say because my brain didn't want to do this video. Except I do have lots to say but my brain doesn't want to do the video. Because if my brain gets triggered, literally if my brain gets triggered, then it can like um, shut me down. Literally does shut me down. It's like on Star Trek when I, it's a feeling of dissociation and derealization and when my brain does that um, it says clear out the decks and it tells everybody to start start scooping out all the contents of the stomach area and then when they say we can't do no more cotton there's none left the brain says find something to chuck out and I never stop being sick well I do eventually so I don't really want to do this video because there's people in my brain who don't want to do the video so I, I do have some backup web comics like that you can look at though so I might put them on in a bit but it's really hard to do this video this week because I don't want my I, I kind of wanted to do it because it's important but my brain didn't want to do it so I haven't been I haven't really been punctual because I didn't want to do it but I know it's important so yeah that's how I don't know if I don't know I don't I'm not very good at talking like all the grown-up autistic people because I feel like all the other autistic people who do these videos and I've my, my mind's gone blank with their names but I feel they're all really good at talking and they're all like the grown-ups and I'm like the little kid who doesn't really know what to say but just likes playing with my four figures instead. So I don't really know what to say about mental health because it's really hard because uh, I don't know I've always had a prominent part in anyway I didn't want to film this upstairs because when I film in my bed that's the bit where it gets scary in my head because it's like there's different places around my flat that where different thoughts come out and doing it because I went over a lot of stuff in the first video for take a mask off so there's not that much to that so it's all on there but I don't know, I find it hard because I don't, because when I dissociate, it's happened by surprise, it's always taken me by surprise and I'm always scared of triggering something because I don't want it to happen because it's horrible. But when I, it does happen, um, it's like there's a mother figure inside me 
in somewhere in the brain and when it happens they go away and it's like and you they go away and then I'm like stuck on my own but then when I go and be cut when I come back and be complete again it's like different and I don't understand this a good ear uh, I don't know if it's dissociative identity disorder or what really but apparently you can be plural without having DID but I guess when my coping strategy was always to be inside my head I've always coped by being inside my head and making up stories and and stuff so that's how I've usually coped because the big thing has been school and that was difficult to be honest, I think I'll just stop here and put um on my list of web comics next with some music. Cause I didn't really want to do this with you. I don't know how to describe things. You can follow me. Yes, I look at my Twitter, but there won't probably won't be anything out there either because I just can't do words with this topic. I don't know what to say, so here's some way. Okay, I'll try some talking, but. Uh, I got OCD. It started when I was at high school. Because I started, um, I had to get to the other side of the pavement before a car went past. And I also started um, avoiding the cracks in the pavement. So ICD started at high school and it was... And it was really hard to get diagnosed because I had to counsellors and they was rubbish. Because I didn't speak at school, apparently I saw a speech counsellor, but I don't really remember it much. Because um, then when mum and dad saw a documentary about an autistic person and thought they were like me, they started trying to get diagnosis. But it was really frustrating so as and at some point I saw a counsellor but it 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 was rubbish because I didn't know they I well they didn't know how to help and I didn't know what was going on because sometimes because I've got so good at going and so used to being in my head of my story sometimes I drift off and sometimes there's like in stuff about the world where I wasn't necessarily present so a lot of the time I was in my own head about stuff that's why I want the you know the scrapbooks and they're like the 1970s scrapbook and they still haven't done the 1980s and 1990s scrapbook and I really need them because I would love them because they would really help me uh, just enjoy stuff because 
that I'm really feeling nostalgic about magazines because I used to buy loads of magazines and have magazines to read and I get, I'm really nostalgic because there was a magazine and it had it one time it was a yearbook and it had a little column which was the diary and I've always wanted to find out what that was because uh, well we may have tells that about quite about quite a few years ago now so I lost some of my stuff so and some things during my teenage years got chopped out or ripped up because I was angry so but so I had counsellors but they didn't know what to do because I didn't know what was going on and then eventually I found a book and I learnt about Artscape but I still when I like you go to Artscape I still feel like I'm the little kid and everybody else is the grown up and they're like the grown up we're the autistic people oh yes yes we and um I don't mean to be mean because I love the people at Artscape but when they start talking about rhizomes like R H I Z O M E S I'm like because a lot a lot of them are lovely and do really amazing work and they have been discussing about how this new autism empowerment sort of campaign movement how we're not appreciating them and I appreciate them but when you get technical I don't feel it's it just academic I'm not very I don't feel an academic approach is necessarily the only way to educate about autism and and I think there are lots of different ways I know that I'm I'm drifting off topic And Mr. Four is here. This is a really difficult topic because I don't feel I am the grown up. And um, there's a really good um, person who I watch is got the idea is the entropy system and multiplicity and me. They're really good. But I can't, I don't, but I feel I can't, like, say anything because, like, it's all, like, feel like I don't have that stuff because my mum would say, um, oh, you read everything, you read so much, you just believe you've got everything, like, and they don't at all, and it can be frustrating. Because then I doubt myself and I doubt my feelings and I think maybe it's all made up in my head. But then when I do get sick, it's like somebody in my head who is meant to, to be the lucky after everyone one has run away. So anyway... A thing I wanted to do. So school was horrible, and I didn't cope well with school and and college. I didn't cope well with school or college either, and I didn't really know how to reach out. And then I had in my twenty something, I had my mental illness because of the menopause. <coughs> and then, then my re my relationship broke up. My first relationship lasted nearly ten years, and then it stopped. And then I sort of cannonballed into into that. I've got to find a man to. So I cannonballed into dating through 
a website. It did not go well. <laughs> I I was crap on the dates, but then they were a bit of a twat anyway. Most of the blokes, and I, and and then I found Doctor Who fandom, but then I was still trying to keep up with like a certain part of fandom which is all about being as rude as possible and about that and about and it was like about um neurotypical sort of approaches to flirting and stuff and I was trying to keep up with that and I didn't understand any of it and I thought that that I wasn't good enough but I got a few and sort of threw myself at some men through Doctor Who and and some of them like well a couple I was still still my friend but one broke me out and then I was like oh boys 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 boy boy and eventually I had a bre a breakdown and I was uh, in screaming in the night time and screaming my head off because I thought I wasn't good enough and um, I screamed and screamed and screamed and woke mum and dad up and eventually I got to, um, mum took me to the doctors and he put me on antidepressants straight away and sertraline and then I've been taking sertraline and it's been working well for me because it's got me back into my passions and um, what I really like, like making art and um, it's got me um, back into videos and watching Netflix but sometimes I still um, sometimes get sick where I dissociate and so and this February February 2018 was the worst I think I've been so now I'm really trying my best to chill out and just have lots of fun things around me and to not stress because although it's been tricky this year because it may sound stupid to you but um like if you're not meant not got a mental illness it may sound dumb but I got such empathy for my soap characters my favorite soap characters and it's been really hard this year because one of the soap characters in the me in the pretend story they got they got really they got attacked as Ross Barton and and then I lost one of my other soap characters that was Aidan Connor from Carrie and I'm still not over the Aidan Connor one. I still have nightmares about it and about and still wake up crying and it may seem daft to you because it's like a made up story but it's so so important and real to me but I am trying to um, not be trying to sort of relax and chill out and stuff because if I get too stressed out and I'm scared I might trigger something and end up splitting apart again so that's why I've been uh, a couple of years ago or so I got some books on dissociative identity disorder and started reading that but now there's the entropy system on YouTube and they're so good at talking and explaining and it's like easier but I don't feel that I can talk to people about it because I haven't really had any support for my mental health uh, after my diagnosis so it's been really difficult because been no support haven't been offered anything and even when I used to have a like sort of a counsellor I had to get up really early in the morning and it didn't seem like anything was helping and I don't want to break force like here but but this year I got into Marvel so that helps and having Doctor Who helps and having at superheroes and magical realism stories I like reading they help and and fan art and 
fan fiction and all that kind of stuff that helps too. And I wanted to say something about the Jenny McCarthy. She's been a complete twat. She's horrible. And she started this end autism now hashtag, which is basically genocide. And I just think that the uh, these militant neurotypicals, they want people to not have autism. Well, if people didn't have autism, then you probably wouldn't have half of the technology or buildings or useful things that we do now. Because um, cause maybe it wasn't all autistic people who invented stuff, but it probably was autistic people who sat down and focused on something till they discovered a solution. And if like Ada Lovelace or Charles Babbage, if Charles Babbage hadn't let fragile masculinity get in the way, she would have done wonders with the computer and we'd be way advanced technologically because she focused for like two years on working out how his computer would work and how, um, and she wrote the first computer program, but because of this, bloody manness that like, oh i'm a man i can't let a woman do it we don't get anywhere because they wouldn't let he wouldn't let her, that work on the computer so and to these militant neurotypicals who want autistic people not to exist they're like how would you feel if you've constantly been told how you're worthless and that you don't, people don't want you. Just like, but I always find it really difficult to have the words because um, cause I tend to just swear a lot. I find swearing, but then that's not a tactic. So I tend to refrain from some of the debates because I can't think of anything to do other than swearing at them. And that usually isn't helpful and gets you Twitter banned apparently. No, I haven't I've managed not to be Twitter banned yet. <laughs> but uh, it's so frustrating because I can't I find words I'm just not a weird person, I'm a visual person. But I have got a new app and it's called Cody Cross. And I'm sure you've probably heard of it because um, a lot of people going into it and it's crosswords and it's words and puzzles and it's awesome and it makes twinkly sounds and it's cool and yeah and yeah 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 so that's cool so as I said I'm off tangent and so here's the web comics I promised you and thank you for watching. I love all of you. Thank you.